Moon Center, Moon Center 13 Live Report, with national and regional news information. Welcome. And sports scores and statistics. Yesterday, GSU students came to witness the opening of the newly re-renovated Fayrot Student Union. SGA President William Mary said it has been a long wait. I'm really happy today that this union is finally over. <laughs> the 40 got to the 50 yard line and finally knocked down about the 35 yard line. Many I said the special teams were going to play a big part of this ball game. Well, that was Harris on the return, and that's the best return he's had all day. One, two, three. Yeah. There are many things in which students can do, such as the screen lounge, the television room with a 50 inch color TV with stereo, video game area, and students can enjoy pool in the pool. Also, there are meeting rooms for organizations to meet. We asked students how they felt about the new room. Pretty cool place, I mean, we came in here, they just opened it today, it was really nice, hopefully, um, as a people, we'll keep it up. We ain't used to having it like this, used to be all raggedy and torn up and everything, but I guess it's a new improvement. Bremen is on the up line right now. Yeah, okay, I think the new student center is very appropriate at this time, because the students really didn't have anything to do, so they're making their own recreation. Now we have something to do, so we have no excuse to have fun, a good, clean, nice, wholesome type of fun. Pretty ecstatic today that we are now in a position where we can open part of the center and make it available for the use of our students. Uh, we've been in need of this for a long time, and I'm really appreciative, appreciative of the students' attitude in terms of being supportive until we could get it renovated. Well, of course, we went through a lot of changes. You know, this is a capital outlay project, and you've got to go through several state uh, qualifying procedures to, to get it initiated and completed. But I'm just happy today that finally we're at this point in time now. I think it's going to add to uh, the quality of student life here, and it's going to become a hallmark building on a campus. So we, we're extremely proud today. The academic program is excellent at, at Gramlin. The staff is a caring staff, and you know, if you need any help, someone is always there. How you added by Gramlin State University enhances the skill of those students who are academically talented, and it negates the disadvantages of those students who have suffered educational deprivation. My name is Anjanette Jones, and I'm a recent graduate from Gramlin State University. My reasons for choosing Groundland was because it's a family-oriented university and you get a lot of background. And I really enjoy going to Groundland. It's a great educational experience. Students are attending the GSU Intramural facility by the dozens. Since the official opening of the facility, students are enjoying the various acts offered here. Here's more on the story from Eric Connor. PSU Intramural Recreational Facility has been enjoying outstanding attendance. The facility, which is located on the campus of Grammy State University, sits between Drew Hall and the GSU Infirmary. The facility serves the recreational needs of GSU students and faculties who are currently enrolled. How does the intramural center compare to some of the larger schools? Here's what one student had to say. They got a, uh, you know, upstairs track and stuff and three courts and they got a weight room. So they got, it competes with all, a lot of bigger schools. Definitely does. The GSU recreational facility is operated by Coach Howard Willis. The center has a state-of-the-art weight room, basketball courts, whirlpool baths, and more, according to Willis. The students are coming and they're going in and they're working in the certain areas that we have here and it's just uh, been tremendous and uh, I like to see that and hopefully that they'll continue to come and use the facility. According to Coach Willis, female faculty and students attend the facility more than males. I, I would say uh, maybe uh, the age might go to the females because uh, 
they like to use the track and the fitness center up there. And, uh, you know, the ladies, they are concerned about uh, uh, body fitness and this type thing. So they're coming, coming in, I mean, often, uh, all day long. As you can see, the GSU Intramural Center offers a wide variety of activities. For News Center 13, I'm Eric Connor. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gets honored at Gramley State University. Here's Mitzi LaSalle with more. Our drum major for justice, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is not at all surprising how great the turnout of students, faculty, and staff was on this great day of celebration on the campus of GSU. We had a chance to talk to Reverend Eddie Allen about the religious aspect of the celebration. When he said he had a dream for all men, he wasn't just uh, segregating black men from white men, but he was putting all of us on the same level, in the same line. And as we live today, we ought to always be glad to look up to men like that, that believe in the things that he believed in. The candlelight silent march has been a tradition at Grambling for many years, and it looks as though it will continue for many more. We talked to our president, Dr. Harold Lundy, on what he felt was the significance of this great event. Well, I would like my own three sons and the students of this great university to understand and realize that there is a legacy, a legacy of struggle, and that legacy of struggle led to progress. One of our nation's greatest celebrations, the birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The students here at Grambling State University are celebrating that great event on tonight. We as African Americans should celebrate that great event not only tonight, but for the rest of our lives, because for without this man, we wouldn't be as far as we are today. For New Center 13, I'm Mitzi LaSalle. This weekend, Baton Rouge, Louisiana was definitely the place to be as the cold gust of winds blew in the hot action of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Tournament. The Lady Tigers fell in the first round to the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State University. In the beginning of the ball game, the Lady Tigers led by as many as 15 points with the steal by Latricia Jones. The ball is passed to Lisa Bruins for the easy two points. Jones then brings the ball down court and Jones with the three-point shot. The next possession went to the G women with the pass to Jones for the three-pointer on the other end of the court. Mississippi Valley missed shot, but the rebound and the putback by Donna White. Jones with the pass to Angela Hall for the three points. And there it is. Latricia Jones is fouled on the shot. Latricia Jones passes the ball across court to Lisa Bruins for the two-point play. Now the Delta Devils are setting up their offense, passing the ball around. Ball is rotated back to the top of the key and the inside to Donna White for the two-point basket. And the G-men are cheering on the Lady Tigers, as you can see, right before their game. And there, the Mississippi Valley, Donna White again crashing the boards for the rebound and the two-point play. There's Donna White again with two points. Donna White had 28 points in the game. The G men, the G women lose the game to the Mississippi, to the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley, 64 to 56. Although the G men came to the tournament with the intentions of winning, the SWAC conference, their first task was to get past the Southern University Jaguars, and a task it was. On three, Sean Jones decided to. Throw the ball down court to Amherst. Amherst giving goal to who else? Kenny Sykes. Vincent Jones for Southern. The point guard decided to take a long three from the top of the key. Counted Lamar Amherst. Jones then passes the ball to Amherst. Amherst with his three point on the left side. Vincent decided to take a layup, but Boozer decided not to give it to him. Scales with the left hand pat move to give Southern the five point lead. Then Mays with the missed layup. Who else scales with the tip in, baby? Kenny Sykes decides to force the ball inside. Somehow, Mays come up with the ball on the Vincent. Vincent to who else? Scales for the monster slam. Kenny Sykes then decides to do it again. This time to Mike Tardy. Tardy with the block by Williams. Vincent with the back. The behind back to who else scales for the slam. Hey, where are the Tiger fans? No Tiger fans. No Tiger fans at all. 
this and then take the lean-in jumper to put the icing on the cake as Southern Jaguar defeat the Tigers 105-91. Friday night, the Student Government Association held its first ball. The ball was held in the Black and Gold Room. Here's what SGA President Gertrude Green had to say about the ball. Judy Warren, who was our um, OSJ advisor, mm -hmm. she helped me coordinate a plan, a format where we went line by line, itemized everything that we could possibly do to make this a good event. Oh, we're going to have the entertainment from the Phi Mu Alpha and uh, the uh, Sigma Alpha Iota, and then we'll just kind of let people dance and, and hang out and just show you. We're trying to bring bring out the cultural side of it. You know, it's good. Not all, all the time you want to be in the gym sweating, trying to break the door to get in. You know, you want to lay back and chill. Apart from housing, New Center 13 Grambling State University Television is a vast student experience in real world television. Here's New Center 13 correspondent Yolanda White with a look at the local tube. Dentist of Grambling State University Television is a major source of information for the campus and Grambling communities. Also, I like the news team because uh, they, give, they update me on some of the activities and the going-ons on campus and I also like the Diamond Video Showcase show. The Television Center provides mass communication majors with an opportunity to enhance their skills and teachings acquired in the classroom. It houses the campus-wide satellite master antenna television system and broadcast programs on a cable channel. I spoke with director James Penny about the operation of the facilities. Well, Yolanda, let's uh, look at the program in two different ways. First of all, the program uh, and this facility is part of uh, mass communications. In that area, our responsibility is totally academic. Uh, we serve as a laboratory for those majors and minors who have a concentration in the broadcast area. Uh, those students use this facility uh, to develop the skills and technique necessary to try and participate as uh, career professionals. Uh, the other thing that we do here at the television center is operate GSU TV. Uh, that's how we address the public service mission of this, this facility as mandated by the president. And that is to deliver programming that is of interest to the local community. That community consists of uh, not only all residents on campus, but those who subscribe to the local cable company and live in, in the town of Grambling. Many students majoring in mass communications have gone on to obtain successful careers in the field. This is because of a criteria set forth by the teachers and students present and past demanding that you strive for excellence. For New Center 13, I'm Yolanda White. We seem to have another surprising issue that's been kept undercover for a period of time now. For a look into this story, here's reporter Julian Marshall. The nursing building last week. In fact, it's another issue dealing with a very unexpected group. Our own target marching band was on campus Friday delivering their message to the student body. Here's one of the coordinators, Marlene Bryant, telling the story. Band has, we're about to march out for a little mini rally to let students know what is really going on with the band. We're having a lot of problems with our head band director, Curtis L. Willis. And basically, we've taken it to the administration, all of our grievances, problems, and everything else. We've taken it to administration. They don't want to do anything about it. So now we're going to let the student body know exactly what's going on. And we're going to petition to get this man out of this position because we've given him two years to do something with himself. He has done nothing but bring down our band. She also stated other reasons, such as scholarships, favoritism, improper treatment on trips, and politics within. Former drum major Eric Harris spoke about such politics. Rules don't apply to everybody. Like if you're late, then you lose your spot on the field. And or, but if you're good and good with the band directors, then you don't lose your spot on the field. Polit Talking to Mr. Willis, he sees it differently. I think it's it's uh, due to the backing of one of the instructors, at least one or two of the instructors. As the rally continued, President Lenny arrived on the scene or to the rescue, asking them to move to the auditorium to discuss it a little more quietly. After seeing no difference in talking to Lundy, the band members decided to walk out and said no more. We will continue to handle this ourselves. Reporting for News Center 13, I'm Julian Marshall. News Center 13 has been keeping you informed with stu the student government candidacy. Well, the night has finally come. Reporter Meredith Cole has more on the story. I'm here tonight at the Nursing Building Auditorium to let you in on who's running for what in the SGA nomination. This is the night that all of Grambling has been waiting on. 
Monday night was the most rewarding ceremony in the Student Government Association nomination. The student body was there to make sure their favorite person was nominated. There were a great number of students seeking student government positions, including one future treasurer, or maybe, who stood out among anyone else. Dean of Students Life, Leroy Durant, was there and had this to say about how he felt the nominees did. It was great um, knowing that they really did not have that much time to prepare a speech, but I think during the campaign they'll be much better by bringing issues to the table. After observing the nomination, Eric Patrick had this to say. I'm quite sure that, well, some of the candidates I know personally, some of them I don't, but I've observed them throughout my years at Bramlin State University, and basically I'll just listen and hear what they have to say and I'll take it from there. Reporting for News Center 13, I'm Meredith Cole. Does a store that has everything really exist? You bet your grocery cart it does. Here's News Center 13 correspondent Yolanda White to take us down the aisles. In today's society, the name of the game for many Americans is convenience. And we've all been to convenience stores that offer one-stop shopping where you can get a few grocery items while getting a tank of gas. We found a place that's giving new meaning to the word convenience and is definitely keeping up with today's trends. And it's here in Grambling at Hills Grocery and Hardware. At no other convenience store can you get groceries, automotive supplies, plumbing equipment, clothing, a side of beef, lawnmowers, dishes, gardening tools, an old-fashioned wash tub, and even fill her up all in one place. I talked with Lovey Hill, co-owner of the store, about how she feels about her business and its help to the community. Well, we've been in business now for approximately 25 years. We started off at a small grocery store up in the country. And, well, the thing that would motivate me would be the interest of the community, because we lived in a small community where there was no grocery store, and I thought it would be a help to our community. At Hills Grocery and Hardware, you get convenience and variety, but most importantly, you get service with a friendly smile. For News Center 13, I'm Yolanda White.